What's up guys? Welcome back to another Tesla Talk Tuesday. We got some recycling we gotta add here, but uh welcome back to the Tesla. Today today we're actually gonna focus on the Cybertruck. There were a lot of things that happened during the Cybertruck uh, presentation, including but not limited to the botching of the uh, Tesla armor glass on the truck. So obviously the drop test that was good. The, the tester, they throw the, the one kilogram steel ball at the, at the Tesla armor window on the Cybertruck. Yeah, that didn't go too well. Needless to say, it cracked if you didn't see it, but um, yeah, let's just get into it. All right, guys, so as most of the US or whatever the world knows at this point that, that is somewhat interested in Tesla and watch the Cybertruck reveal, there's a little mishap with the uh, testing of the actual Tesla armor glass on, well, both the driver and passenger uh, windows. So, uh, yeah. So what happened was they did a drop test, and that was all they were supposed to do. Supposedly, uh, they were not supposed to actually test it on the truck on stage, but they did because Elon's Elon. Um, so the explanation for what happened is that they did the sledgehammer test first, and then they did the glass test. And they're saying that when Franz took the sledgehammer to the side of the door a couple times. It caused like a micro crack in the glass because of the impact on the door. Um, obviously, the glass sits in the door and when you roll down the window, it goes into the door. So there's a connection there, obviously. Uh, so that micro crack or whatever happened there, when he threw the one kilogram steel ball at the window, that's what resulted in the crack. Then people were saying, well, he didn't take the sledgehammer to the, the rear driver side door. Um, and that window still cracked when he threw the one kilogram steel ball. This I haven't really seen Elon mention this or talk about this, but supposedly the rear window was not set up for like a demo of any sorts. There was no Tesla armor glass installed in the back window is what I've heard and read. I don't know if that's true or maybe the sledgehammer impact also caused the micro crack in that window. I don't really know, um, but there's a tweet from Elon saying, yep, sledgehammer impact on door cracked base of glass, which is why the steel ball didn't bounce off should have done the steel ball on the window, then sledgehammer the door next time, dot, dot, dot. Um, so yeah, uh, that's, that's kind of the explanation there. Uh, whether you want to accept it or not, the point is it's still gonna be made of super strong, super durable material. Any other car, if you hit it with a sledgehammer or throw a one kilogram steel ball at it, the doors are gonna dent, they're gonna bend, and the glass is gonna crack, so the fact that Yes, if you went up and had the perfect combination of hitting the sledgehammer on the door, so it cracked the base of the glass, then you can throw the one kilogram. Like, who's walking around with a sledgehammer and a one kilogram steel ball? The point is, the truck's gonna be extremely durable, and uh, I, I still don't think this is really too much of a fail. If anything, Tesla's just trying to help make this truck out of stronger material, make it more durable, and that's, I think, the point that people need to understand. So the next thing is obviously the design. Super polarizing, uh, as Elon stated. Um, but there is uh, a method to the madness or a form to function to the form, uh, whatever you want to call it. There's a reason why the car looks so futuristic and well, the reason it looks futuristic is he based it off of other things, but uh, the car is very like planar, lots of flat lines and sharp angles. And the reason for that in a tweet from uh, Elon, reason Cybertruck is so planar is that you can't stamp ultra hard 30X steel because it breaks the stamping press. So you need, you can only really create flat sheets of that stainless steel. So yes, you could, you could still have sort of a, a planar sort of truck shape, um, like less slope to the roof. Um, you could still make like a flat truck bed kind of shape um, and make it look a little bit different. But having these ultra, pull, ultra durable uh, stainless steel like body panels, this was the way to do it. He wanted to come out with like a bold, crazy design. And honestly, these bold, crazy designs are getting him free, free marketing, um, free press, free, free publicity, free attention. All of this stuff is free, and now everybody knows about the Cybertruck. So whether it's good or bad, uh, I don't think it, it matters to him that much. It's good in his eyes because it's free publicity. He was able to do whatever he wanted, and he can always just make another design later. There is an explanation to uh, the steel that's used. It's, it's just so strong and durable that you can really only make flat sheets. I think it's possible to do curved sheets, but then you have to like reinforce the curve somehow. It, it, it makes it much more complicated and much more expensive. And obviously with Tesla, they're trying to keep costs down in order to increase those profit margins. 
and well, this is what made sense. So then someone followed up and asked, what came first, the decision to switch from carbon fiber to stainless steel on Starship or using stainless steel for Cybertruck? And uh, Elon said, Starship steel de decision came first. We were going to use titanium skins for Cybertruck. We were going to use titanium skins for Cybertruck, but cold rolled 30X steel is much stronger. So that's sort of the explanation as to why I mean, it's still a very polarizing design. He could have, you know, used those shapes differently, but I will say that I am curious to know if there is something that also has to do with the drag coefficient. Um, when, when Elon came out with like the updated fascia for the Model S, um, and then even when you look at the Model X and Model 3, Elon has always talked about drag coefficient on these cars, and drag coefficient is huge because that helps with the range and range is super important for electric cars and range anxiety. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there is also more function in the form of the Cybertruck in getting a low drag coefficient. Um, I don't know the numbers, they haven't really shown anything. Uh, I don't know if they've taken it to a wind tunnel, but just something to think about. And you just have other tweets, uh, someone, someone replying to Elon saying, need to keep emphasizing these points. Many of us have spent the last few days trying to explain to folks why the material can't be curvy and why shape has to be so specific. I swear if I see one more Photoshop version of the rear bed walls cut out, I'm going to snap. <laughs> um, so it's, you know, a lot of people are, are on opposite sides of this. This is probably the first time where uh, Elon Tesla has come out with a design that is truly sort of split the Tesla fan base. You know, you have the Tesla fanboys um, and it's it's not not the best design. I, I think I think everybody can agree on that. Um, it's grown on me a little bit, but it, I mean it's still just so weird. You're used to seeing cars, uh, supercars, trucks in a certain way, and when you see something different, it it doesn't seem right. Um, so maybe it'll grow on people over the next two years. I mean we have two years for it to come out. I mean yes, it, it could change over the next two years, but it may not change at all. Uh, obviously, you're gonna have to get mirrors of some sort potentially unless they can get rules changed around like having cameras for mirrors But like for the most part the design could stay exactly the same Unless there's implications around like crash testing the truck because the truck is so durable There's no crumple zones and I don't know what rules and regulations are about around that But that has been a, a, a strong point that a lot of people have pointed out uh, What's gonna happen when you crash test this cyber truck? So here's another person um, so Elon tweets out that the reason the Cybertruck is so planar is that you can't stamp ultra hard 30X steel because it breaks the stamping press. Um, so you, you have to make it super flat. Uh, and someone said, ultimately, what was the tipping point for steel over titanium? And Elon said, high hardness, higher strength, or higher hardness, higher strength, and doesn't cost crazy money for about th three millimeter thick skin. So that's why it's so durable too. It's three millimeters thick. Um, as you can see in the demo, they shoot a nine millimeter round at it and it, and it looks like a paintball just kind of like exploding. Um, they take a sledgehammer to it and it does nothing. It is it is pretty impressive and I think that is probably a, a good thing for a truck. You see so many trucks out there that have huge dings in them or the beds are all messed up from, from throwing things into them. Uh, I think this 30X cold rolled stainless steel is gonna be absurdly durable, which you know that's kind of the point that Elon is making with these tweets. Um, and, and sort of the function of, of going with, with these crazy designs and, and why he went with it. It's different, it's different to say the least. I mean, you have the DeLorean that people are comparing it to. You obviously have the James Bond, uh, Lotus Esprit, submarine car, and then Blade Runner. And th these are all things that Elon had, well, I don't think he based it on the DeLorean, but it looks similar to it because the DeLorean's made with that brushed metal look. It's, you know, it's true to what he said. He's said this for years, like, People should have been more ready for this. It's gonna be extremely polarizing. People are gonna hate it. And it's based out on something out of Blade Runner. So, um, you know, I don't think he was wrong on any of this. Cybertruck is our last product unveil for a while, but there will be some mostly unexpected technology announcements next year. So I'm, I assume the technology is probably gonna be furthering like full self-driving or something, Your battery technology, something like that. Um, and that will help you get much better range out of not just the Cybertruck, but all their cars in general. Um, but that is interesting to know. So obviously at this point, we have the Model S, the Model X, the Model 3, uh, the truck's now unveiled, the Roadster's been unveiled, the semi-trucks have been unveiled, uh, and the Model Y's been unveiled. So all of these things are out there. It's just a matter of getting the Model Y, the Cybertruck, the Roadster, and the semis to full-scale production, 
and really selling those. And then obviously he's announced the Plaid powertrains, um, the upgraded powertrains that Model S and Model X will be getting, most likely going to the Roadster and will some sort of variant, I assume, will be in the Cybertruck, which is what the tri-motor setup is. People have asked for uh, matte black or like, uh, basically like a blackish looking metal form of the truck. And Elon said that shouldn't be a problem. Um, someone also asked, uh, when you solve the manufacturing process, can you please also make a smaller version of the Cybertruck? I don't want to block my whole street. So these trucks are huge. And Elon said, long term, it probably makes sense to build a smaller Cybertruck. So that's also sort of a sneak peek going forward. Somebody also said, Cybertruck based SUV with a rear facing third row easy access would make for a killer nine person, million mile green sports car fast SUV to evolve us beyond minivan and conventional SUV market. Elon said, interesting idea. So he's, I mean, he is always open to these crazy concepts as you can see from what he's done. Elon said, true, new manufacturing methods are certainly needed, but then I'm confident it will actually cost less because of its simplicity and lower part count. So there you have it, the truck, much more simple to make, and it has uh, uh, much fewer parts. Um, I think in the past I've talked about them streamlining the uh, whole electrical wiring harness on the, on the cars, which I assume they're probably gonna try to implement in the truck which means more uh, robots can kind of do that process, more automated, it's cheaper, it's easier, and the lower part count. If you just have to you know, print off these flat panels of stainless steel and then put them together, it's probably much easier to assemble than all these crazy curves on the cars and, and then putting those together. Let's see, what else has Elon said recently about, there's so many tweets, if you just look at like uh, replies and tweets, tweets and replies, uh, from, from Elon over the last couple of days. This is where I'm getting all this from and it's, it's very interesting to see these things because he addresses a lot of people and, and questions around what's to come. Uh, are these features ever gonna come out? Um, oh, someone said, could you build a black oxide edition? Elon says, yes. Can't wait for this to come out. I, I think it's gonna be interesting. Um, Elon did also tweet, there were 146,000 Cybertruck orders so far. This was as of maybe like Sunday, I think. Um, 42% choosing dual motors, 41% tri-motors, and 17% single motors. So I think the biggest thing is range and towing capacity. Um, also, if you're getting a truck, you probably want at least uh, like all-wheel drive, so the dual motor variant. Yeah, the single motor I feel like was more just to have a lower price point in order to start the truck off, but I think anybody who's seriously considering it should at least consider the 10K bump and try to finance just a little bit more, save up a little bit more because uh, resale and, and just usability of the truck is that much better, having a higher towing capacity, um, having a dual motor all wheel drive, and the longer range, over 300 miles. Somebody also tweeted out, memes are the best form of free advertisement, and Elon Musk said, haha, very true. Tesla has never paid for like advertising, you don't see billboards with Teslas on it, you don't see commercials on TV, it's been all word of mouth, it's from the Tesla fanboys out there, and I think that even though the Tesla fan base doesn't necessarily like the design of the Cybertruck. It's still getting so much advertising because people are talking about it. And uh, well, there's really no, no better way to advertise than word of mouth and uh, just driving the vehicles. Uh, I still would strongly reiterate, if you've never driven a Tesla, so many people say they hate these cars, all oh, electric, it's terrible, you don't get that V8 noise, there's no shifting. Uh, I think Doug DeMuro did a great video recently on the Cybertruck comparing it to um, actual other trucks as far as like price point and uh, the specs. Uh, I thought that was a great video. Um, one thing that I don't think he took into consideration was gas. Uh, you're gonna save a lot of money. Uh, obviously you still have to pay for electricity, but you're gonna be saving a ton of money in gas, especially with like the F-150 variants that aren't diesels because the gasoline cars or trucks when you're towing get terrible gas mileage. I mean, you're probably looking at 10 to 15 MPG max. Uh, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe you're, you're definitely not getting over 20 miles per gallon. So when you start comparing an electric uh, truck to uh, a gas or even maybe a diesel towing, I think there's gonna be a significant amount of savings in, in that. So I don't know what that would come out to be, uh, but it would be an interesting comparison to make. Maybe one more thing, just like Elon Musk does, uh, they brought out the Cyber Quad, the ATV that went up onto the back of the Cyber Truck at the end of the unveil. And somebody else said, uh, I better get that space ATV while we're waiting for the for the uh, production of the truck. But Elon came back and said, 
Tesla two-person electric ATV will come at first as an option for the Cybertruck. So the only way, my understanding is, is that the only way to get this ATV at first is gonna be as an option with the Cybertruck. So when the truck comes out, you can spec it to come and get delivered with the ATV, which is pretty sweet. You can charge it in the truck bed. You have the air compressor, you can fill up your tires, all that good stuff. Um, so I, I guess that's what's gonna happen. I wouldn't be surprised though if Elon was like, you know what, let's have a little extra revenue and just start selling the Cyber Quad early. Um, but then again, it's hard to deliver because they don't really have dealerships. They, but either way, very cool. So I'm, I'm, I'm definitely gonna have to opt for that option. So I, I mean, I'm, I'm very excited for this to come out. Uh, even if it doesn't come out, I would love to see it in showrooms. Uh, I, don't, I don't really think they have Model Ys in showrooms. So it's hard to see these cars up close, you know, until they're actually coming out. And well, two years to wait is a very long time. But I think that is gonna be it for Tesla Talk Tuesday. I hope this was interesting. I found his tweets and answers to other people's tweets very interesting, uh, very insightful. And well, it starts to make a little bit more sense here. Uh, maybe people will just get over the design and like if you truly want that uh, durability, that built tough truck, this is it. I, I mean, uh, whatever people say, this is, this is, this is it. So uh, I'm very curious to know what the range is gonna be when you start towing. Um, and and what the final you know specs or add-ons are, but nonetheless you, you can't say that the truck isn't cool in its own way for now. Whether or not you like the designs, it is interesting and it is neat to see that Tesla is sort of pushing these boundaries of designs and specifications and just deliverables. So uh, looking forward to what's going to happen with the the Model S, the Model X, and maybe the Roadster over the next two years as well. We have a long way to go. So uh, we'll see what Elon tweets in the meantime, but I think that's gonna be it. If you guys are enjoying the content, please consider liking and subscribing, but until next time, thanks for watching.